by the river. We're here in the village of Manyenya, which is a r remote rural area uh, out of Mbali, which itself is a three and a half hours drive outside of Kampala, the capital city of Uganda, mm. where there is a high degree of poverty and there are many, many orphans, uh, mainly because of AIDS. Uh, these children are doing wonderful work among themselves. <laughs> So with us here is um, the group of orphans and vulnerable children from Manyenya Primary School in Bale. And uh, they gather here uh, during the holidays uh, using uh, beads and some other local materials. They get to make necklaces and they also get to make bracelets. They, they sell them and get money and from that they are able to buy books for themselves and they are able to... Uh, get other basic necessities. Supporting around 58 orphans, the 25 are in a council, a kind of parliament, and the orphans organize themselves and uh, you will meet uh, the president who is 16. It also decides how they allocate the money that comes from these uh, pieces of jewelry because they all go into the same pot and they are all sold uh, through the same process. What age were you when you became the president? No, it's 14 years. When you were 14 years old. When you were 14 years old. How many orphans are in your group? Yeah, 50. 50? But one of us passed away, died here. Council of Every More, Prime Minister of Education. Um, in, in, in the council, in the orphans council, there is a Minister of Education. Minister of Health. Minister, Minister of Health. So how often does the council meet? We use, during school days, we use weekends. Most of the children here um, are orphans, total orphans, and they are living with their elderly grandparents. And it's so hard to see that they have to live that kind of life because even when with, with their elderly grandparents, it turns out that they are actually the ones looking after their their grandparents and. So I tend to look at such homes as actually house-headed homes because these, these are children and their grandparents are really elderly. It's so good to see them seated, seated here and making necklaces and, and bracelets to sell and get money. This, I'm told, is being sold at 5,000, which is equivalent, almost equivalent to one pound. It takes less than a day. So during our assessment with these children, it was discovered that the girls were missing school because uh, they were unable to afford sanitary towels. And uh, Asset came in to train the girls on how to make um, sanitary pads using local materials. And so today, each of these girls seated here is able to make their own sanitary towels using a, a pieces of cloth and a needle and thread. They can simply sit around here and stitch them together and now they are able to stay longer in school even during their monthly periods. With us here is uh, Naim Hassan, who is the minister in charge of education, and uh, he's going to tell us how his ministry works. Bola ho, the ministry of education is very important. I am going to say that I am going to say that I am going to so, so Hassan is saying that they, 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 in school, one of the things that he does is that to ensure that his colleagues are in school and that uh, at least in class there is chalk, at least from what he's saying. Mm. So this is Lunyolo Mase and she's the minister in charge of health. So she's going to tell us what does she do in her ministry. Good, how old? Fifteen. Fifteen. For me, I'm in charge of... When, maybe when the medicine is over in the hospital, I'm in charge of that. Then when, when my community members over there are sick, I'm in charge to look after them. 
So Bosco here is one of the beneficiaries. When we started, he was a very little boy, but he's now grown and is almost my height. Uh, he could not continue to secondary school. And luckily enough, there was an opportunity of a few of them who were being sponsored uh, in vocational training. The parliament decided that Bosco uh, should be one of those. So he's undergoing uh, a bricklaying course and uh, he now knows how to construct a house. And I believe in his community, he'll be very useful and he'll make some money. So this uh, uh, is one of uh, the children in this group and uh, she is called Sandra. And um, when we started, Sandra was in primary school and uh, she has her story that she'd like to share with us. And Sandra lives with her uh, parents who are um, living in, in abject poverty and uh, they were unable to, to keep Sandra in school. And unfortunately, Sandra was made pregnant by one of uh, the men in the community. Sandra says she, she conceived when she was in primary seven. She was only 16 years old then. And her baby is now nine months old. And uh, she says, unfortunately, her parents uh, were unable to keep her in school. And uh, now she currently, she's actually not in school. She would like to go back to school so that she can have her own shop and do her own uh, things and, and, and an income out of it. Naomi, who is behind me, who is the uh, head of the Acid and Barley program, is asking members of the council, the orphan council, how they propose to distribute the money which they're making themselves through their jewellery. Yeah, is saying that uh, for her she thinks they should buy chicks and they start looking after poultry. And uh, she has said that... Uh, the president has an idea of looking after turkeys. 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 Oh, sorry, rabbits, eh? Mm. This community uh, has been quite different from the rest of the communities in that we, uh, we began with a school and um, so the church came in later but we are glad that they are now on board and they are fully uh, um, supporting the, the work that um, uh, asset is doing when uh, school is open the children actually get to meet in in the school in classrooms but during holidays the school is closed and you can see the church has opened its doors for the children to have space when when we last visited Charles uh, we had a very tiny house that uh, that the roof was made of banana fibers so it's amazing today that we have visited and he has built uh, even a slightly bigger house that he has covered using iron sheets and because of his industriousness he has bought the iron sheets uh, by himself he bought the nails and the doors by himself even when the rest of the house is made uh, he has simply made it by himself using the soil and and uh, the other local materials my mom was not together with my dad she felt sick she passed away it was 2011 now from there i wanted to leave school then I, I sat down, I thought, now, if I leave this school, where am I going? They added on me more experience and skills. I have learned so many things from it. Right now, I know how to make the dozy necklaces, to fry eh, half cakes, Any, and also to To rare piglets. Rare piglets, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now from there, I was staying with my grandma. She also felt sick. My aunt came and 
Toko half. At her place, I used to start on. Almost was a full year when I start on. Now, I sat down again, then I thought, as we, you know, for us, this we used to make smaller houses as we boys. I started to build my hunch. Eh? <laughs> We are so glad that at his age, 16 years, he's able to do such an amazing thing. He was living alone and um, this is something that he had to get up and do for himself and we are so proud of him. Here was Charles's first house. As you can see, uh, it's, the, the roof is made out of uh, banana fibers. And actually, if you get in here, it's so neatly and made so and so intact has, that uh, not even rain can go through it. And uh, now he was able through his he hard work to buy iron sheets. He, he earns money from little projects that he does. He, 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 he has had his own projects like uh, poultry, poultry projects. He has also uh, reared pigs in the past and, and was able to sell uh, some of the piglets from which he earned money to buy those materials by himself. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.